Mauricio Guzman is a somewhat forgotten driver in motorsports history, let alone IndyCar history. It's not too hard to see why, as he wasn't the best driver in the world, but he certainly wasn't a bad driver either. In his time in IndyCar from 1993 to 2001, he was usually a middle-of-the-road driver, finishing no better than 10th in the points. This was for all but one year. In 1997, Mauricio Guzman had a career year that's unfortunately been forgotten over time. I find that to be a bit of a shame, so let's shine some light on a forgotten great season. Today, I tell the story of Mauricio Guzman's great 1997 kart season. Entering 97, Guzman was returning to PacWest Racing for his third year with the team. His previous two years were interesting cases, with 95 being okay and 96 being mediocre. Guzman had decent speed at times, with him grabbing four podiums in the last two years, at two apiece. 1996 saw a lot of inconsistency, and it was that point that hurt him the most. In 97, however, the inconsistency seemed to wash away, as he also showed more pace than ever before. Guzman also had some personal changes, mainly through an intense fit regime which helped him lose about 40 pounds. This weight loss journey of his might be one of the biggest reasons why the year ahead was so good. Speaking of which... Race number one, Miami, was a pretty decent start. He didn't light the world on fire or nothing, but it was still a great run. Mauricio qualified second. Very impressive. Matters race day weren't as spectacular, but they were still solid, and definitely a lot better than how things went for him the year prior. He'd bring the car home in P6, a pretty good result. The same couldn't be said about the next race in Surfer's Paradise. While an eighth place start for Mauricio was pretty decent, the race went poorly. Guzman had a decent initial start, keeping firmly in the top 10, but as Christian fit up Paulie crashed horribly right behind him, the race would be restarted in its entirety. Things were looking good for Guzman, as he ran the top 10, but a late race spin and stall with 8 laps to go dropped into the back of the pack. Guzman would come home in 17th, the last of the cars to see the checkered flag, but still in the lead lap. So it's fair to say that Surfer's Paradise left a lot to be desired for, but thankfully for Mauricio, Long Beach saw a rebound. Starting the race in 3rd, Guzman kept it up at the front, finishing runner-up to race winner Alex Zanardi. It was his first podium since Michigan the year prior, and his best ever IndyCar finish to that point. But the topsy-turvy nature of the store this year sort of came back in Nazareth. Don't get me wrong, it was still a solid run, as Mauricio finished 9th one lap down from a 5th place start. But compared to Long Beach, it was certainly a downgrade. But yet another rebound seemed to be on the horizon in Guzman's home race in Rio, as he put it on the pole, the first time he did so in the series. But what could have been a great outing came to an end on lap 56, as Guzman and Roberto Moreno made contact going into the first corner, sending Mauricio hard into the wall. Guzman's snap going into the corner was very strange, but we were never really given an explanation as to what went wrong. We're five races into the season, and leaving Rio, Guzman was eighth in the points. It's fair to say that the star of the year was a tad inconsistent, but besides a few hiccups, this went away for the rest of the season. Race number 6 of the season would also be the first ever IndyCar race at Gateway, and it was a good race for Guzman. He'd start 3rd before finishing 6th. Not a blow your socks off performance, but still a great run. The next race in Milwaukee was practically identical, minus a position in qualifying in the race. Mauricio would share the front row with pole sitter Paul Tracy, starting 2nd and eventually finishing 5th. The next race was Detroit, where things were interesting to say the least. Coming to the white flag, the Pac West team was in a great position, with Guzman in the lead, as he had been for the past 24 laps, teammate Mark Blundell in second and Greg Moore running in third. Things were looking good on the surface, but both PacWest cars were running on fumes at this point. It was going to be close, and Guzman was only a few miles away from his first win in the series. But what could have been a fairy tale first win turned into utter heartbreak, as Mauricio ran out of fuel on the back straightaway. Teammate Blundell soon sputtered to a halt as well, giving the win to Moore. It was nearly his first win, but instead Guzman was forced to settle for a 16th place finish. Portland was a good comeback, as although a 6th place finish wasn't anything amazing, he did lead 38 laps all day, and it was an overall good performance. It was certainly better than Cleveland, where a 6th place start would turn into a 15th place finish after troubles in the race. On a positive note, this would be Mauricio's last finish outside the top 10 this season. 
Toronto was a solid race, which actually bucked a trend that some more astute viewers may have spotted so far. Usually, Mauricio would lose positions in the race, finishing behind where he started. But in Toronto, Guzelman held his own and gained four spots in the race, finishing sixth from a 10th place start. Although the same couldn't be said about the next race, the second US 500, it was still a great day. Mauricio started the race in second and would finish sixth for the second race in a row. He'd nearly get three sixth place finishes in a row, as in mid-Ohio he started sixth and finished seventh. After the trend so far this year of decent races followed by a bad run, you'd expect things to be rough in the next two races. Well, you'd be wrong, as he had some of the best races he ever had in his IndyCar career. The 14th race of the season would be at Road America, and it was about six and a half seconds away from being a perfect weekend. Guzman would grab his second career pole position and lead eight laps on the day, eventually finishing second behind race winner Alex Zanardi. I've covered this race already on this channel, so if you want to watch that video, feel free to click the card on the top right. Next up was Vancouver, and some of you may know what's coming. From a fifth place start, Guzman was decently quick all day, but after Brian Harda and Alex Zanardi crashed, Mauricio Guzman would take the lead, holding it for the last eight laps and scoring the victory in the 1997 Molson Indy Vancouver. It would be his only ever IndyCar win, and it shot him from 7th to 4th in the points. The final two races of the season were a mixed bag, but both all right. Laguna Seca was the worst of the two, with a 5th place start ending in a 9th place finish. Fontana, however, was much better. As he grabbed his 3rd pole position of the year, he'd go on to lead 66 laps on the day and finish 4th. Speaking of 4th, that's where he'd finish in the points. Guzman's 1997 season was truly a career year. It saw his highest ever points finish, his only win, his most podiums in the year, and his most pole positions in a year. He wouldn't get another podium until 2000, and wouldn't get another pole position until 2001. With an average start of 4.2, an average finish of 8.2, Mauricio Guzman's 1997 season was a year to remember in very good ways. Thank you all for watching, and have a great afternoon.